Hey guys, we're back here with Carrick, and I've asked Carrick to talk to us about some uh, tips, tricks, do's, don'ts around your CAN bus network. So a lot of uh, you that are using automatic transmissions are looking for a good place to tee in to your CAN bus wiring. Uh, this is a wiring harness from uh, PCS. Uh, this is one that I'm using on my build, and it is for a GM6L80E transmission. That is a smart transmission. It needs data from the engine. It needs throttle position sensor and all that good stuff, which for some applications you can use this, but if you have a CAN bus network, you can use these two wires. So how do I get this to talk to my Cummins harness? Well, first thing you notice, Steve, is this is a harness that many of the many of you might be using on your builds. You look at that plug, and it matches the plugs on our harness. Yep, it looks very familiar. It's gray and orange. Right. Yeah, from, so, <laughs> from my perspective, that's your first thought would be, I'm going to plug it into this harness. But what that will do is, if you look on our harness, this is uh, just right behind where the Murphy gauge wire is. You'll find a plug much like the one that matches Steve's. Um, it, so it looks like that's just a plug with nothing in it. So what you, what, people, what you might think is I can unplug this and throw it away and plug in my transmission harness right here. But you don't want to do that because what this is, this is a terminating resistor for the CAN bus on our engine harness. What is a terminating resistor? Glad you asked, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> the terminating resistors are used at each end of the CAN bus. And what they do is they um, help ensure that you have good, constant communication across your CAN bus. Um, think of it this way, you got a hallway and you got all this information going down a hallway and it hits the hard wall at the end of the hallway and all that noise just goes to the end of the hallway and just starts reflecting back and just making a mess of the place. So what these resistors do, think of them as like they would absorb the sound. It's an acoustic tile. <laughs> there you go, an acoustic tile. Why don't we just call them that? Well, because we call them terminating resistors. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so what they're doing is they're taking all that reflection of all that complicated data that's coming through the CAN bus and they're stopping that reflection from happening, thus ensuring that you have good communication across your CAN bus for all your devices. So as tempting as it may be, here's your ECM plug, as tempting as it may be, do not tee in by getting rid of your terminating resistor here, right by the ECM, or the one on the inside of your harness. Right. So where do I plug this in? Well, first of all, I'm gonna take this I just took out and put it right back in the harness so we don't Thank lose you. it. Uh, well, you're in luck because on the engine, we do have a three pin a connection point on the right in the front of the valve cover, uh, much like we have in our test vehicle beside us. So two pin, three pin, what do I do? Right, so what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to look at your manufacturer's drawings for your transmission harness, and you're gonna have to find the correct polarity of the two CAN wires, because there's a positive and a negative. Okay. And you wanna make sure you get those wired correctly to the three pin on our engine, and which actually is only populated two pins, right? Right. Okay. The, the, third, the third pin is typically used for a shielding or a ground, but that is only necessary if you have a CAN bus that is extremely long. And most of our vehicles, the, they won't be that long, so a ground is not needed. Okay, so on the front of that engine, right in front of the valve cover, as we've shown you in another video, there's a three pin uh, triangular plug that has just a rubber slug in it, and this would plug right into that. Right. There is one more spot on the interior harness where, uh, good and bad, we have an OBD port that is broadcasting uh, the CAN bus network on it. Uh, so if you wanted to make a harness to plug any kind of transmission controller or other um, accessory that's using that data link, you could do it off of this, but the downside is you would have to unplug um, that transmission or whatever accessory it is if you were gonna try to uh, pull a code or do anything else with this. Now, what about the back of the Murphy gauge itself? So we have the Tyco plug, and this obviously has the CAN bus going into it. And on the back of the Murphy gauge, there's another socket uh, just like this. And is that to where you can daisy chain things together, or how do you uh, do yeah. that? Would you do that? So the, the second plug on the back of the Murphy gauge was designed to, you could use another one of these and actually install a terminating resistor on the other side of it. So it's not designed to continue the CAN network and install other devices on that plug. Okay. We chose to put the terminating resistor in the harness right beyond the Murphy gauge. This way, a little piece won't get lost. Okay, perfect. So don't daisy chain off of that. Right. You have the option to use your OBD port if you want another interior pickup. You could, if you're not using our Murphy gauge, you could change that plug out to whatever other 1939 uh, CAN bus gauge or display you want to use or accessory if you're just using our check engine lamps. Uh, but 
the easiest thing to do is not mess with any of that and grab off the triangular Deutsch plug on the front of the engine. Right, that would be my recommendation, Steve. Uh, perfect, perfect. And if I lose a terminating resistor because I took it out, I tried to tee my transmission into it and I threw it away thinking it was a cap, is there a specific terminating resistor uh, that I should be looking for with regard to um, you know, its performance or whatever electrical spec it should right. be? So uh, the terminating resistors we use in our harness are both 120 ohms of resistance each. So the plug is just a simple way to hold the resistor. So if, if you happen to lose this part, the, these terminating resistors can be bought with some online sources, or you can just install 120 ohm resistor in its place. But I can't just shove an acoustic tile in there. No, you cannot. Okay. <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, thank you, Carrick, for the help. Uh, for more information on this, go to CumminsRepower.com, check out that installation guide, and shoot us any questions you might have.